Okay, so we are working on Worm Gear, the Clockwork Dragon. This is from Reaper Bones. The box art is up in the left-hand corner there. Uh, decided to do this dragon because of a video series that Anthony over at the Crafty DM did a few years back. He did a three-part series. One part was the wings, one part was the body, and one part was the base. Not necessarily in that order. But uh, I liked it so much, I, wanted, I picked up the, uh, the kit and wanted to have a go at it myself now all the pictures I've seen online of this dragon the wings were done in leather or leather like substance uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different I wanted to make it look kind of like a uh, hodgepodge and all put together looking like uh, like plates and mismatched pieces so what I did was I took a scribing tool here and with a straight edge I just went right down the wings uh, in different areas just to give it a look of like uh, like plating or uh, like panel lines and I'm kind of glad I did this because the end result it really really speaks for itself uh, I just went ahead and just went in there and carefully scribed because if you've ever used one of these scribing tools you'll know that one slip up can make a huge mess on your project you end up uh, filling it in, sanding it down, and then trying to start from scratch again. Now I also use a rivet tool here, which there's the little rivets right there. You can see those a little bit easier after the paint's put on there, but uh, I just wanted to try a few different things on this. I wanted to make it uh, look like a little hod hodgepodge of uh, bits and pieces and greeblies and just something, uh, something other than just the traditional leather uh, leather wings that uh, I've seen pictures of but yeah this uh, this project took a long time my as of publishing this it's uh, almost mid-January my video before this was my Halloween special and that's partially due to uh, spending a little bit a little bit longer on this project but also the fact that uh, yeah I work at a restaurant and November and December are hectic there's a lot that goes on in restaurants in those two months of the year so just had to put a lot of things on the back burner but guess what new year we're back so hope you enjoy this one now while i'm working on the wings here uh, i'll just take this time to go ahead and ask you if you haven't subscribed already please consider it hey we're uh just about uh, just about to 450 subscribers right now and I'm I'm having a blast with this channel I really am I'm having a great time I am meeting so many people just through uh, just through the hobby and just overall just really enjoying having this uh, this channel so I mentioned earlier about doing a stylized base for this one I'm gonna do that in a separate video uh, I figure this one took long enough as it was to to put out I'll just do a separate video for the base itself because I want to put some lights in there now this little tool here this is called a nibbler this is uh, predominantly for working with uh, work with uh, ducting and, and metal and it just nibbles out little bits look at that that looks pretty cool if I can there you go I just wanted to add to the wings here because I think it looks so it, it, it the, the differences just make it look so cool in my opinion uh, there were a couple times I wanted to just keep on going with it but I didn't want to make it look too too pronounced so I just nibbled out a few little bits and pieces and the little pieces that actually come off of there when you cut them off I used those later on uh, just to put on the wings just as little greeblies there there's collecting them right there and I also used a paper cutter to take uh, sheets of styrene this is uh, thin styrene just make some strips figure out where I'm going to glue them onto and just add to the wings itself yeah the uh, the wings on this this model just 
they took so long to do and then then after after they were done with like being put together so long to paint too which I don't go nearly as in-depth in the painting as I did on the actual model itself but yeah you'll see at the end there's a they're pretty intricate uh, cutting off the bases on the feet here I just didn't care for them plus it didn't really stand up that well with the bases on so I just cut those off and then these little tabs here I don't know if anybody's had the same problem with this model but they didn't fit right so I had to shave some of them down especially this one right here the front left leg yeah it didn't match up so I just took my yep there you go just took my knife there and shaved off a little bit here and there to the point where they actually fit and yeah sure it falls down but there's no and the tail kind of helps to balance it once that gets put on but the uh, in the end it stands up on its own and the next video or a future video I'll have the special bait the stylized base for it okay six minutes in and I have no paint on this figure yet but that's about to change just gonna prime it up with some Steinol Res black just shooting it right out of the airbrush and I think at the end uh, I think I gave it like two coats uh, as of right now I'm just gonna hit the dragon and its tail I'm gonna hold off on the wings because I still have a lot more work to do on the wings I mean there's I still can't believe I went as intricate as I did on the wings but I like the way they turned out and I hope you do too so we're gonna work on this uh, there we go and bronze green this is my base I tried to do as little as I could with uh, uh, any kind of metallics I, th this might be the only metallic paint if you even want to call it metallic every other color on here I mixed my on my own I uh, just did it on my wet palette the um, instead of using like copper I well, you'll you'll see you'll see later on I mixed my own colors to make like a copperish type color and I think I pulled it off I mean, it's not by no means is it non-metallic metal uh, I don't even know if you want to call it true non-metallic metal because it's it all it is is just a, a mix of different colors but uh, yeah I just went ahead and put this bronze green through the airbrush and give it a quick base coat just as a uh, just just to get a little bit of color on there to show like a, like an underlying patina and honestly in the end it gives it a good base color for the uh, the layering that goes on top of it okay going with uh, some nylac oxide from Citadel this just gets watered down and there we go right in all the cracks and crevices just to add to that verdigris and just a little bit of a wipe down there I think I just used water to uh, to thin this out I didn't use any kind of medium but I got the effect I was looking for I wanted to get something that would be in the cracks and crevices and see how it looks on the uh, on the leg there as well now this is my test here for my uh, for my copper color some flash gets yellow some vermilion okay red and yellow make orange add a little bit of hex lichen Vallejo game color a little bit of purple in there and then once you mix all that up it gives you a nice copper color so like I said I was trying to do uh, like I said not not really non-metallic metal but I wanted to stay away from any natural metallic colored paints I just wanted to mix up my own there you go that looks like copper to me maybe a maybe an aged or a, a, a hammered copper but I kind of look I like the way that looks
yeah that was my uh, that was my idea for this dragon i just wanted to do something with no metallic paints at all i just wanted to mix my own and the nice thing about that is since it's not coming out of a bottle itself i'm actually i'm actually making different shades of those colors every time i mix some more now i'm adding a few uh yeah, just kind of like bolts to the uh to the wings like i said these wings took forever and i had to force myself to stop at one point in time because i i think i would have honestly just kept going if i wanted to but i'm just adding those and all those are little half pearls that i picked up in a in a set there's some more of the plastic card on there like i said i just i kept on going with the uh with putting greeblies on here and strips and pieces and there we go there's the the wet palette made up another batch of that copper looking paint and like i said it's uh since i had to mix it up almost every time i uh did some more, some more painting they were all all the colors were a little bit different so you've got You've got some some pieces that look like shiny new copper, some pieces that look like a, uh, an aged penny, but I love the way it turned out at the end. Kind of give that steampunk type clockwork look to the whole thing. And I was using the uh, the exemplar wet palette. It's the first Kickstarter that I've actually backed, and I mean, the white palette's it's a uh, it's pretty nice. I, I might do uh, I might do a video kind of showcasing it in the future, but we'll see. It all depends on the schedule. Don't drop them there, John. And then just adding some different, uh, adding a little bit more yellow. painting so you can't even see it I'm doing the uh, the neck and the chest area now I wanted to make that more like like a brass type look yeah very cool model I'm really glad I, glad I picked it up and what I'll do is uh, I will leave links to uh, the crafty DM series on doing this model as well. Okay, adding a little bit of my uh, my uh, acrylic thinner there. Yeah, this is a fun. Uh, fun model to uh, to build and paint I don't know if I could really call it a miniature it's pretty big but yeah all that nylac oxide that's in the crevices that came out exactly as I as I wanted it to all right now for the uh, aged look I took some Citadel contrast paint some agress agress dunes if I can say it correctly and I just went around the the edges uh, just wanted to give it like that that dirty feel along the along the sides there and I believe I went three coats total on that because what I'm going to do is uh, after that dries uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a lighter color right down the middle as well But this is a model where the uh, the coffee staining actually works to your advantage because it actually looks like uh, it looks like weathering. All right, uh, I think that was Iron Jaws yellow. I'm going right in the middle for that. That's another contrast paint. I don't know why it just didn't work right out of the bottle because that little metal cup has like no paint in it now.
and over the course of time of like more more coats here it just starts to enhance the uh, the effect there you go looks pretty cool actually it looks really cool in my opinion up oh, hit that camera and another coat look at that So yeah, not necessarily non-metallic metal, but I like it. Okay, the wings have finally been uh, finished with all the greebling. Oh, got to taint the other side. Get some primer on there, John. But yeah, that's what it looks like with the primer. And look at those panels. Those are different shades. Everything that I was just adding to it. And... Uh, yeah, it took some uh, Athonian camo shade. It's a nice green shade, dark green shade. It serves as a nice base for adding the uh, the verdigris to your to any kind of any kind of model that you want to add to it. So I just went around the edges, and then I'm gonna for, on top of that, I'll add the uh, either nylac oxide or uh, there's a few few spots there where I actually use the dirty down verdigris. Yeah, this took a while. Actually, yeah, the wings were just... The wings could have been a video all to themselves, but I wanted to get this done for you. Okay, going in with a color called Cyberite Green. This is going to be uh, kind of what I'm using for my verdigree. Watered it down uh, a lot. And uh, normally I use the Nylac Oxide, but I wanted to try, try this. It had really good color, that, uh, just really good shade of green that I liked, so I figured I'd try it out. Haven't really used this on a lot of miniatures, so I figured this would be the test subject. And I'm doing some stippling in there too with the, uh, with the Verdigris as well. Okay, going in with some Rust. Use... Uh, Fugan orange shade and also some Griffon orange contrast paint. Again, just doing some stippling. And a good amount of this, and spoilers, will be covered with the Dirty Down Rust. Okay, here's some Typhus Corrosion. Put that on there just because it's got some texture to it. And I wanted to destroy a brush because that's what Typhus Corrosion will do. It will destroy your brushes. So I just dab some of that on there, do some stippling, and there's the dirty down rust right there. Just going to go right over that typhus corrosion because if you're with the uh, not not everything is going to have verdigris. Everything, not all of it's going to corrode the same way. You're going to have steel that rusts. You're going to have copper that that uh, gets that verdigris on there, that patina. So I wanted a little bit of a little bit of a change in there. And then I've got some dirty down rust on those engine stacks as well. And here's where I decided it's time to glue him all together with some super glue. Just some super glue gel. Okay, so as we are finishing up the Clockwork Dragon, I just want to thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please consider it. Like I said, we're having a great time with this channel, and it'd be a great way to support some small channels here in 2023. The uh, One of the purposes of this video, I, I wanted to, to show people that, yeah, you can... You can do uh, metallic looking colors without having to worry about metallic paint. Now you saw how I mixed it up earlier in the video and it looks like copper to me. So I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the end results. Now the, uh, like I said, he's not going to stand up too well. But once you get the tail in there, he'll stand up as well as he can to, for, the, uh, for the final shots. Uh, just gonna get a little bit of red for the eyes. I don't go hog wild on doing like a glow effect or anything 
and just two dabs of red paint on each side and I'm going to call it a day with this one. Bloop. And the other side. Alright, so we're getting ready for the final reveal here. Again, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed everything. And we'll see you in the next video. Hey, if you made it this far, consider checking out the playlist on the left-hand side.